Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a graphic novel that I read, one that is about uh, anti-heroes and uh, clowns and people who dress like clowns. Um, I am referring to Harley Quinn, Breaking Glass, by uh, Mariko Tamaki, which was published in 2019. For those who don't know, Mariko Tamaki is a Canadian writer uh, who uh, writes um, comic books as well as novels, uh, and she's won awards for her work. Uh, She's written for both DC and Marvel, and a lot of her work focuses on, at least from the outside, uh, it focuses on like coming-of-age stories for young, uh, often teenaged women uh, who are trying to find their way through life. Uh, And you especially see that in the comic book that I'm talking about today. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, pretty interesting, like, exploration of, of Harley Quinn. Uh, I also saw that she had written a, or she had, like, a little, uh, a little couple of, um, uh, series for She-Hulk, and I am interested in, uh, checking that out, because I'm whole, I'm new to the whole She-Hulk, Hulk thing, as I'm sure a lot of people are, and I like this to some extent, uh, so I want to see what else she can do. Um, if she can bring the same level of, of quality um, that that is present in certain aspects of this story. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's talk about uh, Breaking Glass. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Breaking Glass uh, focuses on a teenage Harleen Quinzel, uh, who, um, her, her mother has gotten a job on a boat, so she has to go live with her grandmother in, in Gotham City. But when she gets there, she discovers that her grandmother has passed away, uh, and in her apartment is a, uh, a gay man named, uh, Mama. His friends call him Mama, uh, and he's very friendly, and he decides to take Harley in, um, because she doesn't have any place else to to go. Uh, And so she starts going to Gotham High School, uh, where she meets a uh, another student named Ivy, they become quick friends. Ivy is uh, into social justice, she frequently does protest and uh, she runs uh, a garden with her family, and things seem to be um, going pretty well for her. And uh, there's this new friendship blossoming between Ivy and Harley, which I like in the story. It's it's a it's it's a pretty fun little friendship. Uh, but uh, as time progresses, we begin to see more gentrification in the neighborhood that Harley is in. Uh, the Canes, a um, uh, a a Gotham City family that have a lot of money uh, have pretty much planned to buy out the uh, the drag show place that Mama uh, owns, and uh, they've they've even started uh, planning to buy up the garden that Ivy's parents own, uh, and this this kind of frustrates everyone in the neighborhood they try to put on a drag show uh to raise money uh to buy their buy their property but somebody throws a giant cement block through the window uh and harley and and feeling that fit bit of rage about things that aren't fair decides to um throw a uh a brick through the uh the coffee shop that the canes own it's a Starbucks, uh, Starbucks kind of stand-in, and uh, after she does that, she runs into a man who's dressed as a clown and calls himself the Joker, who encourages her to f- uh, to feed her her desire for change and uh, to to do cause more havoc and chaos. More people in the neighborhood begin getting evicted by the Canes, who appear to have bribed uh, some health inspectors in order to condemn aspects of the neighborhood, even though they. They shouldn't be condemned. Uh, Joker begins blowing up some stores that, uh, well, presumably while people aren't there, and and uh, Harley uh, decides to join him uh, to to cause some trouble. Um, and 
Ivy, uh, Ivy and Harley begin to discuss their protest differences because um, Harley tells Ivy about Joker and Ivy warns her about getting close to such people. And uh, Ivy, uh, like Ivy suggests that protesting works, whereas Harley says more direct action is, is needed. Uh, and Harley ultimately decides to help the Joker uh, in his plan to disrupt the Kane Company. He's going to uh, go into the Kane building and uh, delete uh, information from their servers and then blow up their sign. Uh, and Harley decides that this is a worthwhile endeavor in order to help him out. Uh, and once they get there, um, Joker bypasses the servers, which he finds to be a little strange. And he goes up to the top of the building and he reveals that he's going to blow up the sign and crush the, uh, the protesters who are down in the streets below, which includes Ivy, which Harley doesn't like. And as they fight uh, Harley and Joker, it, uh, like Harley knocks the Joker's mask off and it turns out that Har uh, the Joker is John Kane, the son of the Canes and a um, like uh, a person who goes to high school with Harley and is just a generally awful uh, human being. Uh, and uh, Harley uh, manages to stop him from like killing the people below, saving some people and also uh, dismantling a bomb that uh, John Kane had set in uh, Ivy's uh, garden. Uh, but in the process, they bo uh, both John and Harley get arrested. Uh, John is able to use his money to get off and not, not face any consequences. But Harley, in fact, goes to prison. But very fortunately, she manages to tunnel out of prison with a spoon. Um, and uh, she manages to uh, begin hunting down the Joker. Uh, at the same time, like John is put on house arrest by the police and... Um, he apparently goes missing and manages to get out of his ankle, ankle bracelet. And it's presumed that he's still acting as the Joker or he might have been kidnapped by the real Joker. It's a bit unclear uh, as the story ends. And as the story ends, we, we flash over to, to what's going on at Wayne Manor, where uh, Bruce Wayne is surprised that Harley broke out of prison, and he was going to provide her with a lawyer in order to help her, uh, suggesting that he's already kind of doing the Batman thing, and he's trying to use his money uh, for good as he donates a lot of money to uh, various causes that Ivy and her family supported in, in Gotham. In terms of analysis, uh, there's a lot to think about in this story. And uh, while there is some good to it, I feel like uh, Tamaki doesn't do the best with working with some things. Uh, one of the ideas that she's working with here is is class struggle. Uh, because at the heart of this story, it, it seems to be like the working class versus the elites of Gotham. Uh, could have been fleshed out a little bit more, but I think Tamaki does a good job of presenting uh, this story as, as a, ultimately a class struggle. With the elites of Gotham uh, oppressing the the poor people, there's gentrification going on. People are losing their job. There's uh, corruption via money and power. With uh, the Canes actively going out of their way to bribe health inspectors to get buildings condemned and force people out into the streets, so they can't they can't um, uh, like work their way towards saving up enough money to to be able to buy their own buildings. The Canes are outright just bribing people at this point. Uh, and presumably they're, they're able to do so in other areas as well. And it really seems like Gotham is uh, not as uh, bold as, as, as it could be. That, that uh, the, the people in power are really uh, oppressing the, the working class to, uh, to make as much money as they can. Uh, and I think Ivy recognizes this. Um, she says as much uh, as the story progresses. There's a really good quote that I would like to read to you. They're coming after the community garden. All the stores, everything. Everyone I love is going to lose their home. This is not just about Mama or you or me. It's not just about Gotham. It's everywhere. It's corporations before communities. It's a system that protects the rich, fucks the poor, that keeps the powerful powerful, and the oppressed oppressed. It always has, it always will, and I'm sick of it. And that's a really good quote from uh, Ivy because it highlights the, um, the kind of oppression that everyone's facing and, and how apparent it is and like how it's reaching a kind of a, a boiling point, perhaps for like, you know, a, f a bunch of people to rise up from the underground of Gotham to say, we're not going to take this anymore. Uh, but then that applies that all the, all the villains of Gotham are the poor people. And then that's just a weird, confused message right there. 
Um, and, and Ivy would suggest that protesting is enough. That simply standing up to the powerful with, with your picket signs and, and your marches is enough to, uh, to combat this, this, this class violence. Uh, but it, it's not, isn't it? Uh, like it's, it's clear that no matter how much they protest, Cain and, and his family and those in power are going to go about what they're doing with the evictions because it's perfectly legal what they're doing. Like they can evict anyone they, they want. They can bribe anyone they want because Gotham's not going to not gonna stop it. Like at this point in, in Batman's uh, sort of Batmaning, Gotham is a, a corrupt mess and uh, no one can really... No one can really do anything because it's legal and anyone who speaks out is going to be killed. And so what's the point of, of, of just protesting at this point? Like, surely the Joker, to some extent, and, and Harley, like, they have a point in that you have to, you have to fight this class violence with, with measurable actions that let the rich know that you will not be uh, uh, pushed around. And I know that that's suggesting violence uh, and, like, damaging public property. But how else are you going to make it apparent that the system is wrong, the system is corrupt? Because if you work within the system, System, it, it's corrupt. You're not. You're never going to be able to to fix anything. I do think the story tries to have it both ways by suggesting that Ivy is right in some way because in the end, like a generous benefactor gives her money and uh, which allows her to do more protesting. Uh, but at the same time, uh, like the only time people noticed that the problem was happening was when Harley like acted out and started to, started helping Joker like burn down buildings. Uh, it seems like Tomiko is wanting to say both are right, but really only one of those things can be right. Either you do it peacefully or you do it with violence. I don't think you can do it both ways. Uh, and it, um, I, you really need a concise answer there, especially when it comes to matters uh, such as this. But ultimately, it, everything kind of feels confusing because... The Joker is revealed not to just be some chaotic uh, monster man. Like, the Joker is just uh, 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 John Kane in disguise. He's... And, and it doesn't really make sense why it's John Kane. Like, why would John Kane, like, go out of his way to bomb his family's buildings? Like, I know he's trying to target the poor here and say, oh, look what they're doing. Look what the working class is doing. We, it's right for us to oppress them because they're violent people. But it's, it still doesn't make sense why he would bomb his own building in the process. Why he would cause all this violence towards his own company when he could just do it towards other companies. That that would make more sense in a lot of ways. And ultimately it undermines the message of the Joker because the Joker is supposed to be like this this chaotic person and in the end it's just it just it's just someone who has a plan. And it feels like a weird use of the Joker in this story given Joker's history uh in, in, in Gotham City and his relationship to Harley in general. And the biggest question I have with this, like how does Bruce Wayne fit into this story? Because if you're suggesting that the the powerful rule over Gotham and that the people who have the least are actually forced to, you know, go to extreme measures in order to survive, then it's heavily implied that Batman, who is going out and and fighting criminals on a on a nightly basis that he's he's partly fighting the working class he's fighting the poor the people who are who are only doing crime in order to make ends meet and sure there's there's like bigger criminals out there who have master plans but the the people that they're that they're employing those master criminals are are the working poor and like Bruce Wayne has a lot of money and uh, yeah and in this story he does give that money to Ivy and her charitable cause but the answer to this is not another billionaire giving money to somebody uh, billionaires having uh, a lot of power in the community the answer is government intervention the city of Gotham should be doing something and I know it's corrupt at this point but the answer is not giving money to a billionaire and ultimately it still doesn't answer the question that Batman's very existence is is causing problems to Gotham that Bruce Wayne like he can't fit in in this this picture of Gotham that breaking glass has inadvertently accidentally killed the Batman mythos or made it uh, so reprehensible when you when you truly think about it. And I mean that that's always existed about Batman, but I feel like it needs to be said here. And I know Tamiko uh, Tami Tamaki might might not actually be be thinking about it. Like she might not be arguing for that point, but it exists because of her writing, and it needs to be pointed out.
And then another thing that uh, Tamaki is writing about is anti-heroism, because um, um, Harley isn't a noble heroine, as one would expect. And I feel like that's uh, that's something that's developed uh, over the or over the years since she's been introduced into the DC canon. Uh, she was originally a villain who was working alongside Joker, but she slowly morphed into this anti-hero who, while she doesn't necessarily fight for the side of good, she does help people with with good causes. Like she's, she's no longer limited to just uh, setting fires with the Joker. And in fact, m- much of her story has turned into um, a, uh, a, a cautionary tale, or not a cautionary tale, but like a tale about domestic abuse and, and trying to escape away from uh, a, your, your problematic relationships, which I think is very interesting in general. And this is kind of a continuation of that with, with uh, showing a, a, a Harley who has had a troubled past a troubled backstory where she's been getting into fights um, and she's she's like gotten in trouble with the law in order to do what's right in her mind. Uh, and she she tries to fight for good causes, but she does it in ways that are that are dangerous, such as siding with, with Joker. Like Ivy's methods don't really work to her, so she has to work with Joker in order to raise attention about a, a growing problem. And it's, it shows how easy it is to get caught up into chaos, that when you care and when you're passionate, like Harley, like the next thing you know, like you're, you're burning down buildings in order to, to get at the people who hold the real power and who, um, who you might be able to, uh, to uh, like point out are, are, are the villains of the situation. Uh, and I, I do think it's a great adaptation of, 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 an, of an origin story. Uh, and, and it matches the changing perceptions of the time. Uh, like it's it's not as simply like this is this is Harley Quinn. She's running into the Joker. This is more of an exploration of who Harley is and what she's come from and how she might have arrived in a uh, position to work with the Joker and the criminal underworld of Gotham. And it's very interesting. And like it shows that you know not everyone who does bad things. Um, in the case of of uh, Harley necessarily does them because they're bad people. So, like sometimes people get caught up in the law because they don't have that many other options. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe they think to some extent that this is the only way that you can accomplish good is by doing um, what what those in power would say is, is awful. I do think that be, because of the way they portrayed Joker here, that it's an unnecessary addition. They could accomplish this with literally other, any other character. And they, if, if, uh, if Tamaki was going to continue the story down the road, which I don't think she is, like she could have added to uh, Joker's story by including him in a future uh, edition. And also Bruce Wayne's edition is un- unnecessary because it only stands to remind us how, uh, like how horrible Bruce Wayne and Batman are for, for Gotham. Uh, like, it, it doesn't really make sense, and it only stands to say, hey, here's a billionaire who's good, and I, I don't like that kind of message because no billionaire is ultimately ultimately good. Uh, but regardless of that, like I do think the art in this comic is pretty good. There are some like panels where Gotham is presented with a red background, and I, and I really like that that happens because Gotham is always portrayed as a hellscape, and this really adds to it. And then like the the portrayal of Harley in, in its sort of hyper realistic way uh, really makes Harley look good, and really adds to the enjoyment of of this entire comic. So I definitely recommend reading it for the art as well. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Breaking Glass by. Mar- Mariko Tamaki, a pretty uh, fun comic to read, even if it does have a number of structural issues and plot-related problems that prevent it from connect- connecting thematically. Um, I-, I still think you can find uh, enjoyment in it in other ways, so I am going to recommend it to you out there. If you read it before, you simply want to comment on something I said here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about Breaking Glass. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this comic uh, and this author if they don't know so already. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and class struggle travels. Farewell.